A single cell phone can hold over 30 different metals, including gold, silver, and copper. Every year, over 1 billion old phones are discarded worldwide, yet most people have no idea what happens to them next. From dismantling to metal extraction, this is how over 1 billion cell phones are recycled each year in modern factories. The moment you decide to part with your old phone, its journey takes one of two paths. It either ends up as waste or gets a second life through recycling. Some people toss their devices without thinking, while others let them pile up in drawers, unaware that inside each phone are valuable materials waiting to be reused. Every smartphone contains over 30 different metals, including copper, silver, gold, and palladium. These metals are crucial for making new electronics, and recycling them helps cut down on harmful mining operations. Thankfully, more people are recognizing the importance of proper disposal. Many manufacturers, retailers, and independent recyclers now offer easy ways to trade in or drop off old phones. Some companies, like Apple, even offer store credit for return devices, giving consumers an extra incentive to recycle. In some places, laws require stores to accept old phones, ensuring they don't end up in landfills where toxic chemicals could leak into the environment. Once a phone is collected, it's sent to a recycling facility where its fate is determined. If it's still functional, it goes through a series of tests to check its condition. Technicians inspect the hardware, run diagnostics, and erase any personal data stored on the device. Data security is taken seriously. Simply resetting a phone isn't enough. Instead, specialized software overwrites the memory multiple times, making sure that no personal information can ever be recovered. If the phone passes the tests, it might get minor repairs, like a new screen or battery, before being sold as a refurbished device. But not all phones can be refurbished. Many are either too damaged or too outdated to be resold. These devices move on to the next stage of the recycling process, where they are completely dismantled. The first step in taking apart a phone is getting rid of its outer shell. Depending on the model, the casing might be made of plastic, metal, or glass. Some are simple to remove, while others take a little bit more effort. Machines or workers pry them off, then sort them by material. Plastic casings are the easiest to handle. Once removed, they go through shredders that break them into tiny pellets. These pellets are cleaned and melted down to make new products, everything from new phone parts to car dashboards, furniture, and even clothing fibers. Glass casings, which are common in newer smartphones, are trickier. Unlike regular glass, phone glass is chemically treated to make it stronger, which means it needs to be processed differently. These pieces are sent to high temperature furnaces, where they get melted and purified. The recycled glass is then used to create new phone screens, tablet displays, or other electronics. Metal casings, like those found in premium smartphones, go through a separate process. They're shredded into small pieces and run through powerful magnets that pull out steel and aluminum. Aluminum is especially valuable because it can be recycled over and over without losing quality. Once extracted, it's melted down and reshaped into sheets, ready to be turned into new phone bodies, laptops, or even airplane parts. With the casing removed, the next challenge is the battery. Almost all modern phones use lithium-ion batteries, which are powerful but also dangerous if not handled properly. If a battery gets punctured or exposed to too much heat, it can catch fire or can even explode. That's why workers at recycling plants follow strict safety measures. They wear protective gear and carefully remove the batteries before sending them to special facilities where they can be safely dismantled. Before a phone battery can be taken apart, it has to be made completely safe. Any leftover charge needs to be drained first to prevent accidents. If a battery still holds power and gets damaged, it could spark or even catch fire. Once it's fully discharged, it's sent to a specialized recycling facility where it gets shredded into tiny pieces in a controlled environment to avoid overheating. After shredding, the real work begins. The battery fragments go through a sorting process where recyclers use sieves and chemical treatments to pull out valuable metals. Lithium is one of the most important materials recovered because it's a key ingredient in new batteries and is high in demand for electric cars and renewable energy storage. Mining lithium is expensive and damaging to the environment, so recycling old batteries helps reduce the need for fresh extraction. Cobalt is another crucial metal found in phone batteries. The issue with cobalt is that most of it comes from mines in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where dangerous working conditions and unethical labor practices are common. By recovering cobalt from old devices, recycling helps decrease dependence on newly mined sources, making the supply chain more ethical and sustainable. 
Other metals like nickel and manganese are also extracted. Once purified, they're sent back to manufacturers to be used in new batteries for everything from smartphones to laptops to electric vehicles. Even materials that can't be reused in electronics don't go to waste. Plastic battery casings and separators are either burned for energy or repurposed for other industries. Battery recycling is all about recovering as much material as possible while keeping the process clean. Modern recycling plants are designed to prevent toxic leaks, ensuring that harmful chemicals don't pollute the air, water, or soil. Once the battery is removed, the next focus is on the phone's internal components. The most valuable part is the printed circuit board, or PCB, essentially the brain of the phone. It's packed with tiny traces of gold, silver, palladium, copper, and tin. The tricky part is extracting these precious metals without creating more environmental damage, which is why advanced recycling techniques are used to separate and refine them. Once the circuit boards are removed, they're shredded into tiny pieces so their valuable materials can be separated. The first step uses powerful magnets to pull out any steel or iron, leaving behind metals like copper, gold, and silver. But separating them isn't as simple as just picking them out by hand. That's where chemistry comes in. The remaining fragments go through a chemical process that dissolves the metal so that they can be recovered in pure form. Gold, for example, is extracted using a solution called aqua regia, a highly corrosive mix that turns gold into liquid. Once separated, the gold is refined back into solid form, ready to be used in new electronics. Silver and palladium go through similar treatments, ensuring these precious metals don't go to waste. While the circuit boards are being processed, the phone screen follows its own recycling path. Modern phone displays are made up of glass, plastic, and tiny amounts of rare metals like indium and gallium, which are essential for touchscreen technology. Since these materials are difficult to extract, the screens are sent to high temperature furnaces, where the glass melts down and is repurposed for new screens or fiber optic cables. The rare metals are carefully separated using chemical treatments, making sure that they can be reused in future devices. Then, there's the speaker and microphone system. These small parts contain copper, zinc, and manganese, metals that are useful for electrical wiring and industrial applications. The recycling process uses machines that crush and sort these components based on their weight and density. Copper, one of the most commonly used materials in phone wiring, is melted down and refined through electrolysis, a process that purifies it to 99.9% .9 purity, making it good as new for use in fresh electronics. After all the valuable materials are recovered, there are still some leftover parts that can't be reused in electronics. Instead of letting them go to waste, recycling facilities use a process called pyrolysis, where extreme heat breaks them down into synthetic gas and oil. This method converts plastic and composite materials into energy, reducing waste while powering industrial operations. Even though phone recycling has come a long way, there are still some big problems. Millions of old phones never make it to proper recycling centers. Instead, they end up in countries where they're taken apart under unsafe conditions. In many places, workers burn circuit boards in the open air just to extract valuable metals. The smoke from this process is filled with toxic chemicals, putting their health at serious risk while also polluting the environment. Without proper safety measures, lead, mercury, and other harmful substances seep into the air, soil, and water, affecting entire communities. To tackle this, some governments are cracking down on e-waste exports. The European Union has strict rules that force electronics companies to take responsibility for recycling their products. In the US, states like California have passed laws requiring retailers to accept old phones for proper disposal. Australia's mobile muster program has successfully boosted recycling rates by making it easier for people to drop off unwanted devices and raising awareness about the importance of responsible disposal. But phone recycling isn't just about protecting the environment, it's also big business. The metals recovered from old phones are worth billions of dollars every year. Some facilities process thousands of tons of discarded electronics, extracting massive amounts of copper, gold, and silver. A single ton of old phones contains more gold than a ton of mined ore, making urban mining, recovering metals from e-waste, one of the most efficient ways to source these materials. More people are also realizing that their old phones still have value. Many trade-in programs now offer cash for used devices, and some refurbished phones sell for hundreds of dollars. Instead of letting phones collect dust in drawers, more consumers are choosing to resell, donate, or recycle them. This shift helps keep valuable materials in circulation while also making technology more affordable for people around the world. At the core of all of this, in one simple fact, phones aren't just gadgets we throw away. 
They're made of rare materials that, if recovered, can be reused for years to come. The next time you upgrade, ask yourself, where will your old phone go? Will it end up forgotten in a drawer, dumped in a landfill? Or will it be responsibly recycled, its materials given a second life? The future of technology depends on the resources we have today. And the more we recycle, the longer those resources will last. And that's how over 1 billion cell phones are recycled each year, giving them a second life while conserving valuable materials and protecting the planet. Which part of the process surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this behind the scenes look, be sure to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more fascinating factory processes.